to say hello. Yeah. It's time to say hello. 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 Uh, so uh, welcome to Lambda Calculus Beep Boop. Uh, we are, I am Einar, this is... Jonas. Yes, hello. Uh, uh, the slides are at the link here. Uh, it has links in it. Uh, yeah. Hi, hello. Hi, hello. Uh, uh, yeah, so uh, thank you for sticking along uh, until uh, the last session of the day and for uh, a prolonged talk about uh, syntax and, and lambda, calculus. lambda calculus. Yeah, so this is a very inspiring uh, slide that you have made. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> okay, so, so we're going to talk about syntax because we have been talking uh, previously at FlatMap uh, about encoding of various things in Lambda Calculus, such as uh, numbers and, and Boolean. Yeah, so we're going to use like a few examples of Lambda expressions that you can play with, but it's going to be mostly about different ways to uh, present them, represent them. So, uh, so ways to encode Lambda Calculus terms themselves or something? Something like that. Yes. Uh, so this is uh, the kind of traditional syntax that we usually use. Yeah, so, uh, so Lambda Calculus has variables uh, lambda abstractions and function applications. Yeah, so it's, it's not much to, to understand in some sense. It's, it's very simple. Yeah, so you'd think you could come up with a uh, syntax for this that didn't have like, you don't strictly need to use like the Greek letters, I think. Right, uh, yes. You have three but things. But it looks better with some Greek letters in it, I suppose. <laughs> Lambdas are uh, nice. Uh, uh, this is how it works then, right? Yeah, so kind of the computation rule is that you have some lambdas. Uh, Mostly lambdas to the left. Yeah, so there are lambdas to the left there. Uh, it's a function that has a function that has a function. Uh, it's applied three times to arguments. And we kind of strip away lambdas and replace uh, the parameters or the references to the parameter with the argument. Yeah, so, so just to recap, uh, as always, uh, functions have one. Input yeah. And one output. So we take away the lambda a and replace all the a's with foo. We take a away the lambda b, replace all the b's with bar, and so on. And we get this thing at the end. Yep. Uh, and now this is sort of similar to things that we saw earlier in T. Yeah, so this is kind of. So, so far, this is like the usual, I guess. Yeah. Uh, so numbers are functions that take functions. Uh, well, everything is a function that takes a function, but they yeah, that's, that's kind of take what two functions and it applies the first one uh, sort of n times to the second one. Yeah, so it's in, in some sense it's quite intuitive that you apply. Yeah, so larger numbers are zero. larger. And, and you have like this thing where five is like literally larger than four. Yeah, you yeah. count the f's. Uh, and then we have like. Uh, Functions that take functions that take right. functions. Right, okay, so this is now uh, sort of your conventional plus function. Yeah, that's the conventional plus function. And that would work on, on two numbers of the kind that we just saw. Yeah, so it's a function time. that takes like an A number and a B number, and then it creates a new number, and it applies the F A times to the F applied B times to X. Right, so B times is for the, that's basically to reconstruct the original B, is that correct? Yeah, so if it was just this, you would get like the B back, and then you apply like A more Fs. Right, yeah, uh, okay. And we have multiplication, which sort of counts up by B A times. Okay, so you repeat the same We can process. try this. Okay, <laughs> uh, may, maybe just better to, to walk through a couple of so examples. So we have like an evaluator lying around. Right. Uh, we're kind of decided that this is like the well-known stuff, so we're rushing through. <laughs> right, so just, just to clarify, so to the left here, uh, uh, everything yeah, so from the... Two plus three, two. so uh, this is the plus function. That would be the plus, and then you have the number two, which number two. You, can, you can tell from the two Fs. Yeah, and, and then the number three. <laughs> and then you have the number three, you, which you can tell from the three Fs, right? And, and hopefully, three. in the end, we'll see five Fs, right? Yeah, so we can see all the stuff kind of goes according to plan. And that would be five Fs. One, two, three, four, five, yeah. yeah. So, so it, it acts like plus. Yeah. Which is what we want. And then we have like the same thing. This is multiplication. And then there's two and three again. 
Uh, yeah, so now we should have six Fs then. If it two acts. and three are like the first good numbers for demonstrating the difference because if you had like two and two, you'd get the same number with multiplication. And uh, it's a very clever example. Uh, <laughs> and you so get we should have six. Oh, there's one more F. Yeah. Right. You can tell it's one larger by like just by looking at it. So, okay. okay. That's the traditional <laughs> syntax. So, so we, have, we have seen this before. Yeah, so uh, this is what we're all used to. Everyone's like doing numbers with those. Uh, but now, sort of the purpose so of So I think Einar's kind of objection is that there are shoutability concerns. Yeah, uh, it's not terribly shoutable, this syntax. Yeah. And I have this memory that might not be of something that happened, but I think when Dan Friedman was at Flatmap, I have this memory of him saying like lambda, lambda, lambda over and over and doing parentheses with his hands. <laughs> uh, and I'm not yeah. sure everyone like, right, so not exactly uh, what expression he meant. In particular, parentheses are, are very bad for, for shouting. Ah. Yeah, at least if you don't say them, I guess. Uh, Which also means that it's bad for sort of uh, talking about in an open office environment. Right? Yeah, and if you kind of want to shout them to, and if you don't want to move over to the pe person you're talking to. Right. And, and then, yeah, and you get to the stuff like you can name the variables and things. So if you have like the letter I and the word I, different things and right. it can be hard to tell apart. And, and there's also this thing that you uh, say that uh, the variables can be named almost anything and at the same time the names don't really matter, right? Yeah. Uh, because uh, you have this alpha renaming thing where you can sort of just change the name. It has Greek letters in it, uh, it has parentheses in it, uh, and it has this variable capture thing. That's, uh, usually, that's sort of a technical thing that you have to worry about when you write your evaluator, but you, we don't Yeah, so the variable the capture thing is like, you can have expressions like this, and you can use the same names for different variables, uh, and you try to naively reduce it, and you kind of put this y inside here, and now it, this y was this one, and it used to refer to this parameter. Uh, but now it looks yeah, like but it now it refers, refers to, to the inner one, right? Uh, so we have to go through this stuff where, you, oh, before we do this, we have to check for free variables here and there, uh, and rename it, uh, and then reduce. So you get stuff like this, yeah. which uh, seems kind of unfun when the variable names shouldn't matter to begin with, and then right. you spend all this time uh, sort of messing about with the variable yeah, so names. So you, you have to sort of make sure that you don't have these naming collisions that cause yeah. problems. Uh, so there's the Bruin indexes. Right, which is uh, a Dutch guy that counted from one, is that correct? Yeah, so that's a Dutch guy that starts indexing at one. Uh, so yeah. it's kind of the same syntax, but variable names are numbers. You don't need variable names with the lambdas because they just introduce a variable that is numbered accordingly to... Okay, so how do that. the numbers work then? Because, okay, you have... Uh, so you have like the same kinds of things. There's a picture stolen from Wikipedia. Yeah, so you have the classical uh, traditional syntax on top, and then you have this De Bruyne index syntax. Yeah, so you just, you kind of put a number in that is kind of how far out of scope you are willing to go. Right, so you need sort uh, of to, to navigate and so all the way to the outer one, you have to sort of pass by, yeah, so like you, two steps. So you kind of you skip this that, lambda and you right. go there, right? Right. But for the other ones, you just move one step and you, you yeah, so this stop at the first ones. lambda you, mm. you encounter. So you have numbers and you don't get the variable capture thing. Uh, the same, so references to the same parameter can have different numbers depending on where they appear, which can be confusing, but you don't have to do the variable capture thing. Right. Uh, so it just reduces like this. Uh, this is the tra translation of the expression we had a minute ago, and you can see a step of evaluation. Okay, it might be not uh, entirely clear what's going on, so maybe we should... Well, the, what's going on is it eval evaluates to this. Yeah, yeah, but... Yeah. <laughs> but, but why? So, <laughs> so you so pass the one in. So this one refers to kind of this outer lambda, yeah. and you have the f kind of function part of the application here, uh, and you want to find the references to this parameter and replace it with this one. Right, yes, and you have one such reference, which is the number two there, right? Yeah, so since there's one lambda there, this one kind of 
steps over one lambda and refers to the, this one. Yeah. Uh, and we replace the two but, with but the one. But you replace it with a number two. And then we kind of increase the number one by one because we're moving it one lambda into the expression. Yeah, because you need to refer yeah. again to the outer one. Right, yeah. OK, so you replaced, in some sense, uh, some complex naming things with some complex number things. Yeah. OK. <laughs> so this would be like a good starting point to make a more intuitive syntax. Right. Uh, so we have like the numbers. They look kind of like they used to. Uh, if the indexing started at, at 0, you could just count. You could just add all the numbers together. But now you can count the numbers, too. And that would be similar to counting the letter yeah, A. Yeah, right? so you can so do you like five twos for the number two, uh, for the number five. So we ignore that one. Uh, <laughs> and you see we have like 13 <laughs> matches, 13 matches. Uh, and if we remove that one, we should have 12. 12, and you have 12. So you have five plus three is eight. Is there another two somewhere? <laughs> <laughs> I'm not quite sure why it's One, two, not 11. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Well, that's kind of Chrome's issue, to be honest. Oh, it's, 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 it's the time. OK, so this is now the same thing, the same that we saw before. So with it's the, the same function as before. They evaluate mostly like before. Uh, 2 plus 3, 2 times 3. Uh, there's more 2s at the end at this one. No, at this one than at this one. Yeah, so you have 5 twos and 6 twos. Yeah. Right. So. OK, so we, now we have the math. Yeah, so it's the arithmetic instead of variable capture where you have to do this like you subtract one from the three variables in the function that you are applying. Uh, and the uh, kind of number of the variable you're looking for, mm -hmm. it increases as you move down through lambdas when you're looking for it. Yeah. So if you move past one lambda, you have to look for number two. If you move past another one, you have yeah, to Yeah, so if you had it like an expression tree, it's how far up yeah. you have to navigate in. And then you have to kind of add that num number, of sort of the depth of the lambdas you pass through to the three variables in the argument uh, when you're replacing it. Yeah, when you push things down again. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so there's like tricky math instead of the variable capture thing. Yeah. Uh, but there's fewer possible variable names. There's still infinitely many, but you don't have like. Uh, that many? You don't have like A and B and stuff. Right, yeah. You just have the natural numbers. Yeah. Uh, assuming it start at one. Yeah, but it's still quite mathy. And it still uses these lots of Greek letters, or uh, one l Greek letter a lot of times. Uh, yeah. Uh, and there's also this strange thing that we saw before that uh, we, we like to sort of use church encoding for numbers. And now we have these sort of. It's not there's numbers in our numbers. Uh, I'm not sure it makes it less or more confusing. I think it's easier to convin convince someone that it's a number, but maybe yeah. not the number that they are thinking of. Yeah. <laughs> It feels a little bit li like cheating in some sense. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So there's the math stuff. So this is where this kind of leads us to the syntax we are introducing, which is beep boop, uh, uh, which solves all these problems. Uh, so an expression can be a boop. A boop, which is a variable. Which is followed by more boops and then a bop, uh, which is a variable reference. Uh, a beep is a lambda, a pling is a function application. And the pling goes before the function and right, the argument. So it's maybe not so clear what happens in the boops thing. So it, accu it accumulates boops okay, and then so terminates in a bap, right? Three columns are, and I used the last one to, for descriptions, so there's variable abstraction and application. And I see now that the descriptions for boop and bap are, <laughs> well, they're very de descriptive. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, BAP is exactly a BAP, but it's kind of a BAP terminated list of boops. Yeah, so it is, is a <laughs> exactly. It's a number. 
So it's a recursive structure in some sense. You yeah, so when the De Bruyne thing would use like the number three, we have three boops and then a BAP. Okay, so maybe some, some examples? So the identity function is beep, boop, bap, which is like, was like a design guideline. Yeah, because, because that. <laughs> so beep is the lambda abstraction, right? Yeah. And then you have the boop, bap, which Which is basically the number one, yeah. Yes, okay. Uh, and then the numbers. Uh, okay, so every number starts with beep, beep. Because that would be similar to sort of like lambda f, lambda x, or something. Yeah. And boop bap is like the number one, and it refers to. Yeah, and then pling means that you're doing function application. Yeah. And then you're referring to the outer so lambda. This time boop, we boop, can bap. search for. Uh, we don't have to search for the number two, and we get. <laughs> uh, I search for too much. Oh, you should no, wait, I, we, you should start with playing, right? I should start with playing. So playing boop boop up <laughs> should like give us. And now we have 11 of those, which is good. Uh, <laughs> and then we get 11. So it's a lot easier to add up when the numbers aren't appearing on, on or the plinks aren't appearing on the, the left side. OK. Um, so plus and, and now we have the same expressions <laughs> as before. Uh, yeah, plus a multiplication, uh, two plus three, and this kind of kind of reminds me of Theodore's talk because we don't use parentheses; we just, you know, add the stuff next to the other. We have this thing where we yeah. kind of invoke like function application before, but other than that, we're just kind of pasting all the text in. Uh, so we can try perfect. this. Okay, perfect. Um. So we can do stuff like this, uh, beep boop up. That would be the identity function. Do you, can you sort of uh, zoom in a bit? Yeah. So this is a function application, the identity function applied to itself. And we can see it evaluates to the uh, identity Can function. you do the example again? Uh, because so sort of we do a function application. Uh, this is the identity function. Right. This and is the identity function. So you pass the identity function to the identity function, which gives you the identity function. Yeah. Yeah. So then you can start like, so the numbers. Uh, there's a nice rhythm to the numbers. So pling boop boop up, pling boop boop up, pling boop boop up, boop up. It goes like that. Okay. So you have how many? Uh, one, two, three, four. So that would be the number four. Yeah, it's number four. Okay. <laughs> So now we can start adding them together. Right, so pling pling means that you're uh, doing a... Uh, yeah, so it's a f the plus function is going to take two arguments. Uh, it has kind of four lambdas in it. So you can easily see that you're going to pass in two arguments because you have the pling pling. Yeah, you can easily see. <laughs> so... And now what you're trying... Oh, yeah, so you're starting with the plus function, which is the beep, 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 beep. So this should be the plus function. It looks like we're on the right track. Uh, and then we add some numbers to it. Number. So where did the numbers start? Uh, Somewhere. That, that's the first one. Yeah, that beep, 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 right. So that's and number two. Okay, uh, and then you do... The number... Oops, missed one. Oh, you didn't have... Uh, you need a beep. Oh, I'm... I Just mistyped. Right, yes. <laughs> so, if anyone saw me making some mistakes, shout out. <laughs> Otherwise, we are going to try to evaluate it and see that we get five. Right, okay. So, we okay. step through. Uh, Which is clearly now the number five. Yes. It's <laughs> the number okay. five. Excellent. Uh, so, we have a working. So in some sense, that's basically it. Uh, so it's good stuff. Um, but some people, kind of, when they're getting used to it, they kind of prefer to have like, uh, kind of, some visualization of what this would look like in another syntax. Right. If you're familiar with one of the other syntaxes, maybe you want to see those at the same time as you're learning. So you can get like the De Bruyne indexes and stuff, right? Uh, like this, 
so if you're familiar with that, you can use that one. Right, maybe you can also have the... Uh, the uh, or there's another one that kind of assigns variable names right, as well. Right, yes. with the traditional syntax. So right. we can do the addition thing again. Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, one, two, three, four, two. <laughs> oh, that's one too many. Uh, uh, now we've been too right. The number three, right? So you need two to and group three. up. Yeah. Oops. And yeah, so, so that's helpful for learners, I think. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, so you kind of run through a couple of examples with this, and then you're yeah. familiar with the beepoop syntax. Yes. Uh, you evaluate it, and you can see there are, you know, one, two, three. Yeah, the the brain one I, I find hard to read, but <laughs> it's not exactly the right number. I might have made some mistake during this. Uh, it's bling bling beep 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 beep, bling bling, uh, boop 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 boop, boop boop boop, bling bling, boop 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 boop. boop, boop, boop. <laughs> Does that look better? Uh, yeah, it looks pretty Four, good. Three, two, one. Yeah. Uh, two, two, one, two, 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 one. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's kind of saddens me that we got the applause once we ditched the pure beepoop syntax, but. Yeah. It should have been harder the first time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, makes some sense. Uh, ah. Okay, so these are now, yeah, the familiar. And then uh, maybe we want to do like, how much time we do like multiplication while we're at it. So if we want to multiply the numbers, we have kind of the similar thing, but we. It's quite similar. Uh, so we take kind of, kind of what we said was uh, that eight times. We want to apply BFs. Bs are called, no, Fs are called C here because it just assigns A, yeah, B, Because C. you don't really have any variable names, right? So you just make them up. On yeah, I'm not naming them. The evaluator just assigns names to them. Yes. And that's the D. So that should be the mul multiplication function. Right, and then you just need the numbers which are easy, right? And we should get the number six. Number six. Yeah. Perfect. Yay. Uh, okay. So let's go back to the slides a bit. Um, yeah. So we did those two. Yep. Uh, so it has no parentheses. Uh, it's a small set of not very difficult words. Yeah. So just four words. Uh, and kind of solves human. What is it? Human computer interaction issues? Yeah, because uh, uh, it's very easy for humans. Beep poop is it. like the natural language for computers. Yeah, computers and it's easy say for us to say as well. Uh, that's, that's like the noise they make. Uh, yeah, and we can make those noises easily as well. Yeah, there is for us, there is for the computers, so yes. it's all good. Uh, also, the syntax is like really good for. It's kind of easy to reason about sort of what are we accepting now, what is a valid input to the state right. we're in when we're constructing a term. Because it's either be pooping, which is like when you accept an expression, right. uh, or you are kind of working on a variable, uh, then you accept a boop or a bap to terminate, uh, or we're done. And it's also kind of easy to keep track of like how many expressions do we need before the total expression is finished. We need one to begin with. When the pooping, which is function application, uh, we're going to need two, in right, the function yes. part and the argument part, uh, and it decreases by one when we bop, basically, which is uh, the final word of uh, variable references. So all the right. like all the leaf nodes in a syntax tree are variable references. Yeah, so it's easy to sort of make support yeah. for the one who's typing this. Yeah, so that's neat. Uh, and then we have uh, like <laughs> <laughs> yeah a bunch of add-ons. Uh, yeah. I don't know what people mean by this. Uh, I'm more interested in, like, does the untyped lambda calculus make sound? Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, so we have this other editor. Uh, do we so have some? Yeah. yeah. So you can <laughs> ping ping. So we added. Yeah, so that's five. That's five again. Yeah. Right, yeah. And <laughs> it's kind of nice because with the same now example. you get like audio cues and visual cues for kind of what you're typing and what the expression is like. Yes. They're not lovely sounds. <laughs> so that kind of. Oh, that's just a number, right? Yeah, so you can, you can kind of hear how large the number is. Yes. Uh, and you hear this repeating pattern. Yes. Uh, repeated as many times as is the number. And it's sort of how long it takes to play off the number as well, right? Yeah, so uh, the kind of we want to eventually like, play the uh, expression we get when we're finished and yeah. evaluate it and play the next expression and things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and then larger ex expression will take a longer time to play. Which is good because you probably want to stare at them longer to understand them. Yes. Uh, yeah. So. Yes. When it makes <laughs> when it makes sounds, it makes sense to like try to replace the keyboard with the keyboard. Yes. Uh, so I think we have like <laughs> one lying around. Let's let's see if it works. This sometimes works. Uh, we, we like really only need four keys unless we make mistakes. We, so we have like one and undo. Do you know where your ports uh, are? Yeah. Right. I think we use this one. Let's see if it works. Let's see. Oh, there it is. Uh, you can tell it's it said beep boop, right? <laughs> <laughs> That's what the computer said. The computer talking to us in our language. So we undo all the. And we can, we just use the f first four uh, white keys. So we do ping, ping, uh, ping, ping. <laughs> and I think there's an, like an evaluate button here. Which So that's useful. Yes. <laughs> so it's it's more intuitive if you're sort of into the more sound version. Yeah. So uh, y there's already like music notation with notes. Uh, so if you want some someone to like perform a lambda expression for you, you can. And they're a musician. You can hand them like uh, sheet music. Yes. Uh, so. You know, and then they can do like drills, and they yes. can practice expressions and stuff like that in order yeah. to get into lambda calculus. Uh, yes, we want like more soundness. Yeah, uh, soundness is good in programming languages, I hear. People so. are really concerned with soundness all the time. Yes. Uh, <laughs> so you can do the. Should we try to do like multiplication instead? Oh yeah, I have to click a thing in order to connect. Yeah. The MIDI thing. Did you click it? Probably not. Uh, I think some key is playing tricks with me. Nope. It's dead. Let's see. With this. Yeah, we don't have to use the keyboard. Yeah, maybe just use the, the other keyboard. The other keyboard yeah. uh, can be used as a replacement keyboard for the replacement keyboard. Yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah, this is the noisy evaluator. Uh, we want to do, let's do multiplication this time. So we want. Uh, that's the wrong one. 
So we want like to count up by C, uh, now count up by B A times. And then we add some number. And then there are other numbers, yeah. A, B, C, D, yeah, it looks good. And then it takes the expression for you. And then steps to the next. Just the evaluation step. It's beautiful as well. Uh, yeah, it's a nice tune, numbers. Uh, and let's see what's next. Uh, yeah. This voice recognition thing that Einar wanted. Yes, uh, uh, let's see if we can, yeah, we unplug that one, so maybe we So we kind of argued that the beep poop was intuitive for computers and humans. Right. Uh, so but then it couldn't make uh, the computer recognize beep and boop, so it's using different words. Yeah, so we have sort of a beep boop dialect. Um, let's see if it works. It's called sheepdog. <laughs> sheepdog wolf. Sheepdog wolf. Let's see, did we lose sound as well? Did we lose everything? I think we messed up the sound. Oh, really? Uh, oh, yeah. Maybe it's the wrong one. Yeah. Is it that one? Oh, maybe it's, yeah. And there. OK, so that's probably good. But we need that for sound, right? That one? Yeah, I think so. Uh, let's see, right click. Boop. Yeah, it's good. Is it a listening, do you think? It says it li it's listening. Sheep, dog, wolf. It doesn't appear to be picking up anything. Sheep. Yeah. <laughs> it listens to Did you. Did you press the button? <laughs> I don't think so. Okay. Sheep. <laughs> Maybe I pressed the button. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I, we could like... But cat, cat. I mean... Everything yeah. got delayed as well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, so that's the voice recognition bit, I guess. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is very good uh, when it works. It's not very good when it works. Uh, <laughs> 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 it's worse when it doesn't, but... Like yeah, so there's some weird stuff happening. Yeah. Uh, we also got, like, a bunch of delay. That's kind of sad. Okay, maybe maybe unplug that thing. <laughs> you can try to open the evaluator again. And yeah, maybe do it one more time. So we have voice recognition. Uh, With not too much soundness. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's back in. So voice recognition uh, appears to ruin the evaluator. Uh, but you get to say stuff like sheep. Dog. This is sheep, dog, wolf, cat instead of beep, boop, bop, plane. Yeah, so sheep, dog, wolf is the identity function, and cat is application. Uh, yeah. And also the voice recognition got really confused with the word sheep, dog, so we had to flat map that to beep, boop. Yeah, so sheep, dog, flat maps to sheep and dog, yeah. uh, which is good. Uh, and then we have, it says syntax coloring, but it's more like syntax and then coloring. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah, there you, there's syntax so, on top, and then there's coloring Yeah, syntax. and then there's a picture. Uh, and Einar has this workshop he sometimes does where uh, he recreates the Escher square limit picture. Yeah. Uh, so he has a bunch of Elm code lying about uh, that makes it easy to do stuff like uh, split a picture into two parts in different ways. 
Yeah, so this is a much more visual syntax, if you like. For it's a very visual syntax. It's kind of more visual than syntax in many ways. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so we can do like the same expressions. Let's do uh, addition this time. And you see, every time we do function application, it kind of splits vertically and Which lambdas yeah. uh, horizontally, depending on right, yeah. how you interpret those terms. <laughs> uh, yeah, so the colors now are different variables, right? Yeah, yeah, so as it introduces like the A's and B's there, it introduces different colors there. Are you going to add numbers again? Is that, yeah. We usually add numbers. Yeah. <laughs> if anyone like goes through this talk and they're like, oh, I wonder what two plus three is. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I have not been paying attention because we are extremely good at that one. And then uh, we'll see. And it gets quite regular and nice in the end, right? It's not um it's not like a speed improvement. Or the sound is not like a speed improvement. Yeah, so now it's done, right? Yes, no, it's, it's clearly count one, two, those. three, four, five red variables before the dark red variable. Yes. And let's see what else is there. The yeah. Yeah. So the square limit picture has lots of fish in it. Uh, so I never wanted to just use the same operations that it uses for the square limit. Yeah. Uh, so this thing. is Escher's fish. Yeah. Basically. Uh, uh, so now you can clearly see. Yeah, so now it, this gray fish uh, sort of anticipates some, some proper variable, right? Yeah, so the gray fish are stuff you need to fill out later. The black one is the one we are working at right now. Uh, let's see. Right, so now you're n building up the number two over there, is that correct? Yeah, I think so. And then you have the number three down there, which you can tell. So yeah. you can count, uh, it's quite easy to count the final number because you have one, two, three, four, five fish, and then sort of the terminating fish there. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no one understands why they kind of come in from different directions. I don't know why it works out that way, but it's kind of uh, nice. <laughs> so, yeah, we have uh, rectangles, fish. Uh, yeah. Uh, more enterprise sounding stuff, uh, plug-in architecture. So if you want like different sounds uh, on my own computer, I can like triple click this, but I'll just select everything. Like. So let's see. Plug-in architecture means uh, there are variables in the JavaScript. <laughs> so now we get. It is listening. Yeah, it's listening. Sheep. <laughs> Still no. <laughs> Let's see. Mm -hmm. to kind of finish up with something that doesn't terminate. Yes. Uh, so the easy one is like the omega operator. Uh, oops. Oh. 
Yeah, okay. Uh, we can hold it on for a minute. Uh, so it's kind of the function that applies its argument to itself, applied to the function that applies the argument to itself. Uh, it doesn't look so nice. Or it, it's boring to look at. And it's kind of boring to listen, at, at least after a while. Yeah. But you can kind of see what's going on. Uh, like this bit is put into this part and this part. Yeah. Uh, so, so it's getting replicated at every step. Right. Uh, and then there's, was, I think it's something Theodore said when he was working on his talk, uh, and I kind of don't know what led to it, but he said something like, I should try to hide omega in the number 11. <laughs> uh, yeah, so we and I think it had to do with like the unchurched thing that looks to check if something is a number, uh, behaves poorly when there's an omega that doesn't terminate. Uh, but we can put the omega in a number just to make yeah, like a prettier hide it expression. Somewhere, right? So we do a function application. Uh, we have omega for the first one, and then we want something that just takes some steps of computation in order to evaluate down to omega. Right. Uh, so we do like something that looks mildly like number number two, but instead of like one boop up, right. we do uh, the omega. So you, you hit it there, that's the red one, is that correct? Yeah, the red one there is mega. Yeah. It will get larger once it's copied. Yeah. <laughs> and then, well, this is just the last argument. So we pass the identity function to the thing that looks like a number. Let's see, yeah. And then there's a final argument uh, that you just can of use for aesthetic purposes. Yeah. Uh, so we can put some colors there. Uh. <laughs> like this, and then it should, after some steps of computation, first it copies this part into here. Uh, yeah, so now you can see that it copied itself over there, yeah. And it should evaluate down to uh, omega on the left side and then copy the right side again. Well, but, but this doesn't stop, right? Not for a while. <laughs> so I think it gets to Omega at this point and then copies the right part. And now you're back, sort of. Yeah. Yeah, that's basically it. You just want to change, like, the notes for the... I like... I started messing around with the frequencies and I feel like these notes are a better fit for the presentation. Uh, yeah, I think that's it. That, that's probably it. I think it's a... Maybe we should stop. <laughs> Maybe we should stop. <laughs> it said it had no ending. You can wait for it to stop. It's a complex expression, so it's good to listen to it a few times. Yeah, okay, I suppose we're done. Yeah, right. so the code is there. Uh, there's some ELM code. There's some JavaScript. I, I don't think anyone on. can hear what you're saying, basically. And um, that's <laughs> it. Thanks. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Are there questions? I'm, <laughs> I'm hoping this is like the one time we don't get the question like, yeah, do you use this for work? Uh, I, I can sort of envision uh, this is not so much a question as a critique. <laughs> <laughs> that would be like fair. <laughs> Um, well, okay, thanks. Thank